Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this adjustable 3D geometric shape. We're going to start by adjusting the rendering mode from 2D to 3D and we can easily do that by providing a third argument called WebGL into the create canvas function. Now I'm going to draw a sphere and we can use built-in function sphere and provide a size and I'm going to create a variable call size and how about we give it a size of 20. All right, so you might notice that the origin point is at the middle of the canvas, which is one of the differences between the 2D and the 3D rendering mode. Now I want to draw another sphere to the right of this first sphere and we cannot actually provide the x and y or z coordinate into the sphere built-in function but what we can do is that we can move the origin point before we draw the next sphere and to do that what we need to do is that we need to use a translate function to translate the origin point let's translate just the x and y coordinate so how about we move it size to the right and zero down and then we need to also call another sphere of the same size and as you can see here, the two spheres are actually overlapping. And that is because the size here is the size of the radius. So how about we declare a new variable called spacing and give it a size of 20. Actually, let's do 40. And then we're going to set the size as spacing divided by 2. Actually, I'm going to change the name size to R for radius. And then just change all of this. And then now we also need to change size here to spacing right and now the two spheres are not overlapping next I want to draw another sphere but this time I want it to be below this first sphere here and what if we just do the same thing just do translate and then we put in zero right we don't want to move it to the right but we want to move it down by spacing and then let's call the sphere function again it is drawn below the second sphere. And why is that? And that is because we didn't put in two important functions when we do transformations, which are push and pop. And basically push, save the transformation, which is this translate function, and pop returns it back to the original settings before you call the next translate function or next transformation function. The reason that it is being drawn underneath the second sphere here is because initially when we translate it to this new origin point where the origin point is at spacing comma zero and then we call the translate function again and this translate function translates from the new origin point which is this point by zero comma spacing so that's why we see it here but now that we put push and pop here it returns back to the original setting which is where the origin point is at 0, 0 here and if I click run now the third sphere is underneath the first sphere and we basically have to do this every single time if we want the main origin point to be the same point here so we can do push and pop here and then let's say that we want to draw another sphere here so we just basically do the same thing right and we want it to move out by spacing comma spacing and now we get four spheres. And if you look at this one, this first sphere here, because we didn't put in any translate or push and pop, but it essentially is the same format because we're translating it by 0, 0, right? So if we want to create a grid of spheres, we can just use a for loop. And what I'm going to do is first I'm going to declare a variable called num. Let's set num to 2. And then how about we do a nested for loop from i equals to 0 to i less than num, i plus plus. And then the same thing for j. And we're just going to copy this set of code inside here just once, right? And we don't need any of this anymore. And now inside here, what we need is that we need to provide X and Y coordinates that will space each of the spheres evenly across the X and the Y direction. So how about I set X to be equals to I times spacing and Y to be J times spacing. I'm just going to put it in here, X and Y. And we get the same thing, right? 
Now I'm going to also call this function called orbit control. And what this function does is that it allows us to move the camera around so that we can see the shapes in 3D by just using our mouse here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you the third dimension, which is the Z coordinate, right? So how about we also nest it again, nest another loop and call it K, K less than num, and then K plus plus. And basically, we just need to provide the Z coordinate, which is going to be K times spacing. And then we just put this third argument inside the translate function. And now we get a shape of two by two by two. So it's three dimensional spherical cube. All right, so now you can just change the number here to whatever you want. Let's say we want five and four. Let's see where the first circle is actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw another sphere and it is going to be the same size and I'm going to provide a stroke of the color red for this one, but then the rest, it will be a stroke of black. So this is the very first sphere, which is where the center is at the origin. But I actually want the middle sphere, the middle sphere here to be where the origin is. So we need to provide some sort of an offset, but by how much? So if you look here on the X and Y direction, we want to move it by the size of the sphere times the number of columns or rows, right? Which we have declared as num divided by two. So we want to move it to the left by two, but that actually will be a little bit too much. Let me show you. So let's say that I create an offset equals to size of the sphere, which is R times two, or we have it as spacing, right? Multiply by num divided by two. Oh, and we need to add it to all of this. Oh, and we need to subtract this whole thing, right? Because we want to move it to the left. All right, so actually you cannot see it, but this sphere is here, but we actually want it to be in the middle here, in the middle here. And it is because we moved it to the left a little bit too much. By how much? By size, spacing divided by two. So as you can see here, now this sphere here, where it is at the center, where the origin is zero comma zero, is now in the middle of our spherical cube. So now we have adjusted the shape of all these spheres into the middle of the canvas. I'm going to delete this sphere here, and now we can just change the number here, and it will be in the center of our canvas. How about I also make the screen a little bit bigger? All right, and I actually want to set the spacing to be smaller. Okay, now I'm gonna show you this function that actually is going to just make the color pop very, very easily. And that is called normal material. Ta-da! What a cool trick. Why don't we look at the reference page real quick just to see what this function does. So it sets the current material as a normal material. And a normal material is not affected by light. It is often used as a placeholder material when debugging. Surfaces facing the x-axis becomes red, those facing the y-axis becomes green, and those facing the z-axis become blue. So basically, it just gives us this really nice shade of red, green, and blue, and we get what we see here. Next, we're going to vary the size of each of the sphere based on its distance from the center of the canvas. And we can do that using a distance equation in three-dimensional space. And that equation is distance equals to the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Let me declare 
a variable called distance inside this nested for loop here and set it to, so the square root equation function is sqrt and then inside here we're going to put in x squared and we can use a function called power where the first argument is the base which is x and then the second argument is what you want to raise it to so 2 right x squared plus the power of y squared plus the power of z squared all right and then how about we just put in distance in here and let's click run <laughs> okay and you get this big blobs of a thing and that is because the spheres that are at the corner of the cube right has the largest distance from the center and that's why you get this very big sphere how about we divide it by a variable let's call it d and how about we set d to maybe let's do four okay so you can get a sense of how this works so the further it is from the center the bigger it is right so maybe we do a little bit bigger smaller i mean yeah so you can see the shape which is pretty cool so next before we move on to the final touch how about we add some sliders so that we can actually adjust the number here and also the divider and we can create the slider using a built-in function called create slider and what we need to do is that first we need to declare a variable they call it slider here and then inside setup you need to first create a slider using create slider function then here you can set a position of where you want it to be on our sketch and then set the size and then inside draw what they do is that they set another variable to slider.value and this is how you can get the value of your slider so that's exactly what we're going to do i'm going to copy this and how about we declare our sliders let's call it number and divider and that is because i want to use these variables later when we actually get the value of these sliders so i'm just going to delete this for now and then inside setup here what we need is we need to change all of this to number, number, and number. So inside the create slider here, you can provide a set of arguments. So the first one and the second one is the range at which you want your slider to be. So for us, for the number, I want it to be between 10 and how about 15? Let's do 10. And then the third argument is where you want it to start. So let's say we want to start it at 5, which is what we have here. And then this is just the position on the sketch. And then this is the size, how long you want it to be. So let's click run. All right, so this is what we have as a slider. And it gives us an error because num is not defined. Okay, because we have not defined num yet. So what we want to do here is that we want to declare num and set it equals to number.value. And also d so let's just do divider next so we're going to do the same thing for the divider what i want it to have is i want it to start from one it can go up to 10 let's start with how about three and i want it to be to the right of this slider so let's do 100 by 10 um, and then we just need to set d to be equals to divider dot value Let's try that. All right, so what we have here is that num equals to five and then divider or d is equals to three. So we have five by five by five set of cubes right now. So if I move this, then we have, this is one. We don't see anything and that is because the distance of this one circle is zero, right? Because the center of that circle is already at the center of the canvas. And so the next one is two by two. 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, and so on. And here, if I move D to the left, it is getting bigger, right? Because the denominator is smaller. And so as I move it to the right, then we get a smaller and smaller circles. Perfect. How about now, instead of distance.d here, let me declare it as sphere size. And I put it as spacing minus distance divided by D.
And look at this. So let's actually set number to be a bit bigger. Then we can set D to be smaller. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So you might be wondering how is there circles here that are a little bit bigger and then there are just a lot of bigger size spheres in the middle and around this circle here there is like not really anything. So why don't we just print out the values here. So the values that I want to print out is x, y, and z and also spacing and distance divided by d. So let's look at the values here for now. So this is with the number of 5 by 5. So as you can see here, we have a range of x, y, and z that goes from negative 50 all the way to down, 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 down here, 50, 50, 50. This fourth value is the spacing at 25. And this last value here is distance divided by d at 28.8. And as you can see here, this value is actually greater than 25. And then spacing minus distance divided by d. If you click run, we can actually see the spheres here. So why is that? It seems like it is possible to provide a negative number as a sphere size, and it just turned it to be a positive number. So why don't we just check that? So let's say that I put in sphere size here to be negative 20. And that is exactly what we were guessing, which is positive or negative number, it just turns it to a positive value, which is the size of these spheres here. And that's why even if spacing minus distance divided by d is a negative number, you can still see the sphere. So it depends on the look that you are looking for. So what you can actually do is you can also put a conditional statement that says if sphere size is less than zero or greater than zero then you want to draw the spheres or else then let's do the spheres of size zero and then now you get a bit of a different look but i actually like it more without this conditional statement so that's what i'm going to do And then the last part that I want to do is that first, I don't want to be able to control with my mouse anymore, but I want to be able to rotate it to the, in the x direction by negative 15. And because I'm using degrees, I'm going to also set the angle mode to degrees. And then I'm going to rotate in the y direction by angle. And I'm going to set angle to start it at zero. And then I'm going to increment that by 0.1 degree at a time. And the last piece is in the slider function, you can actually provide another argument. And this is going to be the step at which you want each of the slider value to have. So let's say I do 0.5 here, and I'm going to print D here just to show. And so, you can see that each of the step for D value is incremented by 0.5. All right. And now our 3D shape is moving slightly in the Y direction. Then now you can just change and play around with your shape. I hope that this tutorial inspires you to try different ways to create cool geometric shape. I'm using the distance between the center of the spheres and the center of the canvas to vary the size of the spheres, but I think there are so many other ways that you can do it to create different interesting shapes. So give this one a try.